see the world through only just our eyes. When I learned I could go blind, I realized it's all disguise. Hello, everyone. I think I'm live. I think we're live, and people are watching us talk now. My name is Rusty Mattias. I'm going to be your fabulous host this evening. Uh, and after the show, we're going to talk with Sierra uh, about some questions you may have about her show. Uh, it brings me great pleasure to introduce you to my good friend, Sierra. Hi, Sierra. How are you doing? Hey, Rusty. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be here with you all. This is This is going to be really fun. I can't wait to... You no, know, I love this interactive experience of presenting a pre-recorded show. This is so nice. Best of both worlds. Totally. Uh, and I think that we are ready to go right into the show. If uh, if you're awesome. ready to, uh, to, to watch with me, Sierra. Yeah. I just want to say <laughs> thank you so much to the Killarney and Turtle Mountain Arts Council for having me involved in this. Um, Turtle Mountain area is such a dear, dear place to my heart. So I'm so glad to be able to join you in this weird digital space in the weird world we live in. <laughs> See you in a bit. Hello, friends and beautiful people of Turtle Mountain. It's been a long time since I've seen you in person and driven through your beautiful valleys. And I'm really happy to be able to join you in this way until we can see each other in person again. Wasn't born in this town, but I was raised in this place. And I know the lay of the land. And I know this town like the back of my hand. And I was only a year when we first moved here, so my sisters could desperately dance. Family of four, we all took a chance. And it was Arlington Street where I first found my feet, and my best friend lived two doors down. But best friends are harder to come by now. Cause I live in When we moved to Lenore And I thought it was Christmas Day Cause I was playing in the snow On the 15th of May On the 16th of May It all melted away And the sidewalks and streets They were cleared My sisters were gone But I was still standing here As good as gold There's no way I can't leave you all out in the cold Put on your coat Let's go outside Yeah, I'm coming home to say goodbye Do 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 oh, oh, oh. town where we walk in our sleep and we talk to ourselves in the night 
For some fiddle music. I won't disappoint you, Turtle Mountain. Um, I have very fond memories of playing in the Turtle Mountain area at all the wonderful summer Métis events and um, I just uh, I can't wait to be able to go out there again. It's always felt like coming home. And um, I want to dedicate these next tunes um, to kind of my Turtle Mountain family, Grant and Hazel Armstrong. I miss you guys, love you guys. I hope to see you soon. And I also want to make mention of this really special fiddle that I'm holding in my hands. Um, this was a fiddle handmade for me by Alistair Caligari up in Flin Flon out of a tree that's just steps away from his cabin on Amisk Lake. And uh, it's a beautiful, um, beautiful five string fiddle that I'm really honored to have in my life. So thank you, Alistair. <laughs>
<laughs> Sweet. This next song is one that I wrote with my friend Rusty Mattias. Um, it's about uh, some of the most challenging times in both of our lives and a song that we hoped to write for anyone who either has or may be right now struggling to stay in the light instead of being swallowed by the darkness. Um, there's been a lot of darkness in the world in the last year of all kinds, and uh, I hope that this song can, can give a little peace or, or even release. Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I really, uh, I really believe that if we all come together in in love from a place of love, that we can we can get through anything, and we can keep each other in the light. So this is called "Let Me Out of Here."
This next one is a bit of a Sierra throwback that I'm sure if we were together in person, somebody would request, so I'll make sure not to miss it. Um, this was a, a song that started out as just a, a teenage girl's longing love song. <laughs> and um, it was this first song that I ever wrote. I co-wrote it with a couple really talented guys. Chris Gaffney and Keith McPherson um, back in 2007. Man, that's a while ago. <laughs> and uh, this was the first song I ever released and um, made a video for, and it was, it was a pretty, pretty instrumental um, part of my life as far as opening doors to being a singer-songwriter. And... Uh, and exploring writing writing songs. Um, I um, I've played the song for years and years, and it's always been dear to my heart. But um, the most uh, the biggest honor that I've had with this song is uh, having it be kind of um, adopted in a way by a lot of the families of the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. I was asked to play it, this song at, at so many vigils for missing and murdered, and um, it took me a while to understand why. I always thought it was a bit of a strange um, choice, because I always just heard it as, as a love song. Um, and it wasn't until I was asked to play this song at the... Um, the ceremony and the presentation of the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in Ottawa, um, playing this in front of Justin Trudeau, um, that it clicked. This is a song of longing for, for your loved one who you don't know if they'll come home. And um, so this, this song will forever be for them, for our sisters. Woke the midnight all alone Was it a dream that you had phoned? Were you even thinking of me? Is it even a possibility missing me? Is it even a possibility? Monday morning coming on fast Was hoping this August moon would last Whatever you tell me I want to believe Is it even a possibility missing me? Is it even a possibility? You place this promise at my feet That I need something that I can keep Is it even a possibility? You would kiss me then, kissing me. Is it even a possibility? Hearts been stolen, eyes are swollen. All these words were never spoken. Stomach sinking, wishful thinking. Wish that you. Possibility. 
Woke up at midnight all alone Was it a dream that you had formed? Were you even thinking of me? Is it even a possibility? Missing me Is it even a possibility? You and me Is it even a possibility? We live this life in black and white See the world through only just our eyes When I learned I could go blind I realized it's all disguise Ooh. So I go to a space where soaring takes The place of legs and arms Then there's a light that one more for you folks. I want to thank you so much for joining me here. And I'm just so glad that I got to connect with you in this way. And please stay safe, stay healthy, stay in the light, keep each other smiling, and we'll see each other soon.
We'll see you soon. <laughs> Yay! Ah, oh, Sierra, I would like to say congrats and clap, 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 and thank you so much. That was a oh. privilege to watch. And, uh, thank you, Rusty. And I know that that takes a lot of energy, and it's hard to get out of bed nowadays. And yeah. <laughs> we all just watched you take our minds off of the rest of the world for however long that was in a very beautiful mm. way. Thank you. That was, that was thank awesome. Thank you so much, Rusty. Yeah, it's, uh, it is kind of hard to get out of bed sometimes, but to play music and record a show for for the good folks around um it makes it a lot easier so i'm just glad all of you joined me in uh, in this presentation tonight this was really fun there's yeah, people listening from mexico and yeah. rocky lake and yeah well, where else why don't we start right away with a question from the audience sierra sure who are your musical influences when you started out and have they changed over time? And have oh they changed boy. over time is what I said. Um, musical influences when I first started out. Um, well, when I first started out playing music, it was all, um, it was all fiddle music. So it was all my influences were um, just like really all the old, old time and Métis fiddle players. Um my first fiddle teacher, Tommy Knott and uh, Gary Lapine and Mel Bedard and Johnny Arcand, um, Emil Lavallee, um, the list goes on. Gary Lapine. Um, those you can were, kind of hear that in the way you bookended your show, eh? With like sort of fiddle yeah, music. Yeah, those were my sort of major. Yeah, that was my first. Uh, they were my first heroes and people I wanted to emulate musically. Um, and I also had a lot of influence from um, other like Canadian fiddle players like Natalie McMaster, Ashley McIsaac, April Virch, who's now a friend of mine. I looked up to her a lot as a kid. And um, yeah, so those were my first ones. And then it kind of as I grew into other areas of music, like songwriting and singing, then um, my influences definitely grew um but yeah those fiddle players are still in my heart of hearts the, it's, the it's pretty great because I, I can still hear your fiddle influence in your new music you know you still sort of have that mm -hmm. roots and traditional flavoring and cool. you often will have a fiddle hook or something over top of you know songs that aren't traditional as traditional sounding anymore yeah necessarily but i love that you can you know keeping that traditional music alive is is an important thing and people like Ashton McIsaac and Natalie McMaster did it in a way that like can you know bring it to the masses and you yeah do that exactly and that was that. yeah that was one of the biggest things that inspired me from them is how they took very traditional fiddle music and just like built arrangements around the tunes yeah like, they didn't really change the tunes very much in many cases which is exactly what I do in my live shows with my band is um I keep very, very true to the tune itself. And then I let the band kind of modernize and contemporize the, the tunes so that Beautiful people thing. who don't have an innate love for Métis fiddle music are like, wow, this is fun. And then exactly, yeah. and I can teach them about Métis music. So it's pretty yeah, fun. That's great. Uh, okay. Another question from the audience here, Sierra. Sure. Uh, from Nicole Norsworthy. Uh, Question from Anna, age eight. How many songs have you written? Oh, boy. Anna. Let's narrow it down to not like every nugget you thought of. <laughs> yeah, in yeah, yeah. Uh, like how many well, songs have you proper full released and written? Full released. Um, well, there were three on my first EP, I think. And then 10 on my full album. And then since then... Well, we, you and I, Rusty, we released a song that we wrote together, a Christmas song called Time for Myself. We've written three together now. I, I know, had to count they're not on out, my fingers. I know, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so actually the, I mean, you guys heard that. Uh, Let Me Out of Here was written by myself and Rusty here. Um, it was a very personal song and it's a it's one I'm most proud of, I think. Me too. And it's I love it. coming that. out soon. Um, how many songs have I written? Let's say like 50 that I I feel like are songs. 
I'd say like that's a healthy, songs? <laughs> that's a healthy answer. <laughs> but and I I'd, haven't I'd, recorded them all myself. I've like other friends have recorded songs that we've written together. Um, some have never gone anywhere yet. Um, some have only existed in like TV shows and movies, which is yeah. cool. As a third party, as somebody who's like just gotten to know you over the past few years and kind of mm -hmm. didn't really know your whole catalog going into it, this show you just played is like this best of of your shows oh. or of your songs. And you have a lot of great songs that I've come to know and love as these like, they sound really great and timeless. You've written some really amazing songs. Thank and you so uh, much, I love Christy. them. So that I means a lot. Say that it's from it's you. neat to get to know you backwards, you know, like not to learn yeah. about an audience as they grow. It's like we've been peers for a long time in the city and we just totally. kind of are retro getting to know each other. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> the same, same with your music, honestly. And that's really neat. I love yeah. I love that. Okay. Uh, hello from Ear Falls, Ontario, says Darlene Stone. Not a question, but a beautiful statement. Um, Grant Bowden asks, do you play with a band at times, Sierra? And sure uh, obviously do. not right now, but yeah, what, not are right the, now. what are the future plans? <laughs> I do play with a band. I love playing with a band. Um, I have anywhere from, you know, my what you just saw solo to me and a guitar player to me and two guitar players and a bass player and a drummer and sometimes a keyboard player. I don't know. Um, it depends on the show and but it's it's so much fun to play with the band. It's really selfish it. of me to just always want to see it with a full band, obviously. But you do a remarkable job of. It's hard. It's hard to play big full productions that usually have bands as an solo acoustic artist. There. It is. It's and very you a, different. You have you do to a great kind job of, of it. Oh, thank you. And I found myself in what? What is it? Be who you be. That I just want to hear that band. Because that's oh, such oh, a rocker. Oh, oh, you did such, oh, oh. such a powerhouse <laughs> vocal at the end of that. I love it. Oh, did, thank you. That, uh, that sent me chills up my sent me chills up my spine when he sang that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I saw another question. Um, is that a cello behind you to the left? Um, oh, there it is. Yes. Uh, it's not a cello. Uh, it yes, it is. That <laughs> left. That's not a cello. Uh, that that not, is oh, a bass. That's a double bass. Um, my partner is a bass player. That is her bass. It's beautiful. Um, but I do add cello tracks to my music sometimes. I love cello. I love bass. I love strings in general. Often um, you have with your five string, we, we can often mimic cello too, right? Yeah, exactly. We can kind of create, uh, like big full orchestral or smaller chamber string sections um just with me playing violin and we record over top of it in those the are the studio. fun afternoons in the studio oh, sure. it's my favorite day. basically spring building day. a little string quartet or a quintet yeah. or whatever yeah, just exactly with, just you it's so much fun and, and some of you may have noticed um in the show that the fiddle i was playing is a five string fiddle um so it has a low c string which the viola has um and also like mm. i believe that's well, it can achieve the high notes of a cello. So, is that how viola yeah. works? It's like one voice down. Yes. Oh, violin. Oh. Yeah. Violin Ooh, is learn something. Uh, e A D G, and viola is A D G C. Nice. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Fun facts. Can I ask you a question from the audience, Sierra? Yes, you can, Rusty. Uh, another question from Tamara. What was it like opening for Bon Jovi? That's <laughs> a young age. That was so cool. And did you know that his last name is Bon Jovi? Bon Jovi. No, it is, right? <laughs> yeah, I think his last name is Bon Jovi. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was so cool. Um, that one uh, that one was really special because it was kind of through this like fan voted um, process online where people voted online for who they wanted to open for Bon Jovi. Awesome. So that was like, it was really special to have. Well, you, like, you didn't the, feel like you were not invited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're part of his tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it was just for the one show in Winnipeg, but uh, yeah, you it was really, <laughs> it was, uh, it was really cool to be picked like by the people who were potentially going to be at that show. Um, and them saying they wanted to see me. Um, did you get yeah, to like him? being, I did not get to meet him, unfortunately, but I've heard very good things about him. Me too. People yeah. love to hate on him. And also, I, I just have to <laughs> throw back to that show, actually. He is 
an amazingly dedicated performer. So I we bet. heard later that he had pulled his pulled or torn his hamstring before that show, and you never would have known. Oh, well, he went to the Dave Grohl Hospital just, and like, came right back to the stage. <laughs> he just like fully was running around the stage and like jumping up on stuff, and like he just rolls with that big stage adrenaline. I've through always anything. It's crazy. I admire him. I think he's awesome. Yeah. That was amazing. But yeah, at at such a young age, it was wild. And it was so cool to be on stage with with my band who are dear friends of mine. And where was that? It was at the stadium. Yeah. The old stadium, I guess. New stadium. Down Pemina? For those of you who don't know, that's a street (laughs) in Winnipeg. Cool. <laughs> I am good at directions and places. <laughs> uh, another um, question from Grant Bowden here. Where yeah. do you like to record your music? That's kind of a broad question. Like, do you prefer studios, home, ah. specific city, live, um, separate tracks? I like to record um, where there is like buzzing creative energy. And that doesn't like it doesn't matter where that is. Yeah. Um, and I've learned that very well through working with you, Rusty, because like we've moved around now in recording and yeah. it doesn't matter where we are. We have this really amazing energy between the two of us in making music. And um, yeah. there's rarely make- somebody I've worked with where we just and I'm saying this for for everyone else's benefit, but you know exactly <laughs> what I'm going to say, which is. Often Sierra will be saying like, "Can you just?" and I'll be like, "Do this thing I'm already doing exactly yeah. that." Oh should my god, be done. exactly that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really incredible. Uh, yeah, uh, we read each other's ease minds to work with with you. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and I I think that's the most important thing in recording. Like I I mean, obviously there are benefits to being in those big state of the art world class studios sometimes, mm-hmm. but if there's no energy in them then they're just buildings with a lot of expensive machinery i think that so, uh, <laughs> where i was recording be, like i'm excited box. to be in your basement studio when it's safe to be because it's it's a it's crazy down there but it looks so fun and i oh know it's full of your fun. energy and it's and my furnace it's right here <laughs> <laughs> But also to your point, like Paintbox, where we recorded a bunch of stuff together, is a remarkably uninspiring building. Like it's, it is. I, I want to drive dead. away from it as I'm driving up to it, you know. But somehow we get in we there and we have special. a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, we can now, we can. I feel like we can always see the end game of the song. We can hear it in our minds already. And yeah. so it's just like we that's just a space. hurdle to get over. The space. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we use whatever space we're in to make it make the magic come to life. Uh, a question from your video. To th- is, is that, that is that, uh, no, that can't be a question. Oh, how do you know that? How do I know? That is that actor guy from the movie Pay It Forward. Is that in response to Gary Armstrong or something? Grant or? Um, I'm not sure what that is in response to. Sorry. I'm not that actor. Guy. Um, but I did uh I did see how do you know Hazel and Grant Armstrong? Yes. Um yeah, they are dear old friends of mine through uh the Metis community. Um they're they're just like <laughs> two of my favorite people in the world. Uh, we're not related, but uh it feels like we are. They're definitely family. So hi, Hazel and Grant. I miss you guys. I hope you're watching. Uh, (laughs) Excuse me. Hey, uh, another question. Fantastic stuff. If you could collaborate with any artist, Sierra, who would it be from Mark Ireland? Mark Ireland. Cool name. Ooh, any artist. Mm. I think I might know that Mark Ireland. Any artist. That's Blink twice, Mark. That's you. That's such a big question. Um, yeah. Dead or alive? Dead or alive? That's crazy. Oh, boy. Okay, alive. Alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll narrow it down. I'll narrow it down by all the centuries to just this one. <laughs> um, any artist, any artist. Um, I would have to say I would give anything um, to uh, to write 
a song with Patty Griffin. Cool. Yeah. Or Lucinda Williams. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Get on it. I'll work Just on DM it. DM them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta, that's all you got to do now. <laughs> Seriously. Kind of. <laughs> if they, oh, that's great. If I ever thought they used Instagram or Facebook personally, I would, but. <laughs> they might. You never know. And I bet you got some pull. And I bet you they even like your music. Um, that would be nice. Okay. Let's see what we got here for some more questions. Hello from Ear Falls, Ontario. That's where uh, Trout is, right? Trout? Yeah. Festival, Trout Forest. Oh, I love Ear Falls. Oh, I want to go there right now. Oh, he was making a funny comment about Bon Jovi being I playing saw. a cameo in Fit yes. Forward. Bon Jovi. Sorry, sorry, I didn't catch a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Forgot about that. That's funny. Yeah. What do you look for? <laughs> this is an earlier question. What do you look for when choosing songs you will perform or record? And you know what? That's uh hmm. that wasn't the question I thought it was. I thought it was gonna say, what do you look for when choosing a cover? Like a cover oh, song. Oh, interesting. Yeah, of my own songs to choose. But what do you look for of your own songs when you when you're choosing a I guess a, a set list? Writing yeah. a set, yeah, or, or recording. A record. Um, wow. Hmm. Well, I like, uh, you know, I think the show should have um, uh, a nice flow to it, like some some ups and downs, a little emotional journey, a, little a story stool journey. section, a section where you um, sit on a stool. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do like to, like bon uh, in in many cases, I like to kind of find that flow of my show through the stories that I will tell around the songs um because sometimes there's a nice arc like a, a larger story arc throughout the stories that i'm telling oh, um nice. but yes it also depends if i'm playing solo or with a band because when i'm playing solo um or with my guitar player chris ulrich who kind of a like knows all of my songs um mm. or can like really just hop on and go with it, Fill it uh, out. on the fly. Um, then I have a bit more freedom to just like you feel the audience and, and just kind of be more in the moment with you guys. And that's my favorite thing to do. Really? Um, that's awesome. Like to be able yeah. to have like a pool of songs that yeah. you feel comfortable choosing from. I've never yeah. had that as a, as a performer. <laughs> I've always been like, yeah, this is the really set list and I must not screw it up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there definitely are shows like that, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice. That's I really love house concerts for that reason because it's just a very relaxed but intimate setting and I can just I don't know, like sometimes people will make comments throughout the show like in between songs cuz we're just in a room together. Those so house be concerts. like, "Oh, that was a real that was really fun. I remember that." And there's a story about that and now it's making me think about this song that I'll just play now instead of this other one. Yeah. Those shows totally feel like they're in it with you. You're you're all doing the show together. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally. great. Yeah, the audience yeah. is such a part of it. Um picking songs to record though. Oh, I don't know. Do you find that your yeah. songs, when you're picking to record, that you have songs that will have a life that you didn't expect them to have? Like they'll stick around in your head a whole bunch or they'll keep coming up for some reason and you, and they just end up becoming the song that you didn't even try to become a song? Like when I'm writing a song? Yeah, like you know how you'll have a thousand voice notes in your phone? Oh, yeah, definitely. Songs you're working on? And there'll always be one or two that are specialer than all the rest, and they kind of come back up in your mind a bunch. Yeah, Does I that find that you? those are the the ones that just like keep popping up are always the ones that I'm like, okay, okay, fine, I'll work on you, okay. They have a like life of their own, right? Like they're, yeah. They're bugging you to they're work like on them. I love that. Flying. It's like a like a fruit fly flying around. They're just always there. And you're just like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay I'll work with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, um, Kathy, Kathy McKay would like to know, how would you compare playing the five string fiddle to the four string fiddle? Oh, um, well, I love my five string. Um, it was made by a dear friend of mine in Flynn Flun, Alistair. Uh, we all saw the story. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm just kidding. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Say it again. Um, he's an amazing fiddle maker, and uh, he just started making violins in retirement. 
he was like, I wonder if I could make a fiddle. And he just tried and he's really good. Really? It. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm sure you've told me that before, but man, it sounds great. Yeah, it really that. does. So the cool thing about the low string, uh, this low C is that it, it gives the instrument a whole new kind of resonance. Like it just, it sounds bigger and more resonant because it has yeah. harmonics and whatever. But um, yeah, like I... I often in the old Métis tunes will tune my fiddle to an open tuning because that's how they are. Um, but in doing that, I also have to tune down this the C string, even if I'm not playing it, because then the resonance will be that much Oh, bigger. really cool. Interesting. So but it like actually changes of, all the over and undertones of the instrument. Totally. Itself. Yeah, Neat. totally. So, cool. but yeah, outside of like Métis and old time stuff, I also really love playing it like we were talking about in in the studio for creating chamber arrangements um but also just improvising with it it has just such a unique sound and if you're interested in listening to more music on a five string fiddle i highly recommend um listening to oliver schroer it's s-c-h-r-o-e-r -E and he was one of my best friends in the world um he's no longer with us but he was a revolutionary um, solo violinist. So no way. If you're interested cool. in hearing more of what a five-string violin can do, check out Oliver Schroer. So it's like a violin plus. Like it's yeah. just, there's so much more you can do with that tool. If you would, mm -hmm. if you were, um, if you had to go like, if you just turned around and grabbed one, would you grab the four-string or the five-string first right now? Probably five-string. Really? Yeah. You just mm -hmm. get more out of it, eh? That's great. I love it's, it. Well, at least right now. It's very yeah. inspiring to me because I've been playing it a lot more lately. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, I think there's only a few minutes left and there's just a couple questions left. Okay. Um, and one last question here that we have is, dream place to perform. Ooh. Um, I love to mm. play at Red Rocks. That's what I was thinking. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the craziest venue and yeah, just because it's, it's oh, nature's so venue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a natural amphitheater in just stunning beauty. Yeah, yeah. Red Rocks. Totally. I think I also feel that we all maybe are aching to be outside really bad. Right yeah. <laughs> I just want to go outside on some rocks. Yeah. <laughs> I never rock. wished that teleporting was possible more than now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, I think that that might be it. Thank you to the Killarney and Turtle Mountain. Arts Council and everyone who tuned in tonight. Thank you to One Truck Productions for filming the show. Um, you did an amazing job. I love working with you guys every time. And thank you, Sierra. You did an amazing job for all of us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, made you for our evenings seeing. worth watching. And mm. well, it was thank a treat. Thank you. I really hope I get to see you all in person really soon. I hope you see Ditto you all. Samers. <laughs> see ya. <laughs>